Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing an 8 that are great specifically focused on books about World War II. Now World War II is a little bit of a basic bitch kind of topic in history. It is very much a, uh, a buzzword in historical fiction of which a lot of these are um, and it sort of falls in and out of vogue but it is one that is definitely oversaturated as far as um, specific time periods go. But you know, I just, I really enjoy it. I have always been a big fan of World War II fiction and non-fiction. I cannot articulate why. I know it is such a basic thing to enjoy of the whole genre, but you like what you like. So I have eight books here, two of which are non-fiction, six are fiction, um, that are about World War II in some way, shape or form. And I've kind of mixed in the fiction and non-fiction. The first one I have to talk about is Eagle and Crane, and this is by Suzanne Rundell. And this is looking at um, specifically America and Japan and that side of World War II. And it follows two boys or young men for the bulk of it who actually basically run away and become kind of like show um, pilots. They do all sorts of like flying circus acrobaticsy stuff. Um, but it's just in the run up to Pearl Harbor and one of them is Asian and he basically, his family gets dragged away to kind of concentration camps. It's about um, sort of a torrid love triangle that is going on between these two gentlemen and then um, a young woman who is actually the daughter of the guy who like they work for and it is about sort of uh, jealousies and betrayals and all the sort of emotion wrapped up in what it was like to be Asian in America at the time of Pearl Harbor um, and sort of everything that was going on there as well as also this very cool flying circus sort of motif going all the way through. I really enjoyed this as a reading experience. I loved the romance of it. Um, it felt very high stakes and dramatic especially with the flying circus element. I love anything that has a kind of performative element as well a lot of these do also feature that um, and yeah it was also really enjoyable as somebody who often reads um, fiction that is set in either France or the UK when it comes to World War II it was quite fun to read some stuff that was sort of across the pond and more American centric um, you'll notice a lot of these are very France and British heavy so yeah great book the next book I want to talk about is a non-fiction and this is a woman of no importance the untold story of Virginia Hall World War II's most dangerous spy by Sonia Purnell this is looking at Virginia Hall who was an incredible spy for World War II. She was American but she spent the bulk of her time in France and helped to organise the French resistance. She was also responsible for smuggling a lot of people out of France um, and yeah generally was an incredibly cool woman. She's also great when it comes to disability rep because she did have part of her leg shot off. It's not a, a war injury, it was actually pre-World War um, but it's something which is talked about throughout the book as well. Um, it talks about basically just her career and her life in general. I really enjoyed it. Um, I do think that the author takes liberties a little bit with how much she sort of puts onto um, Virginia and how much we kind of know her internal motivations and a lot of documentation has been lost from Virginia both because of sloppy um, organisation but also some things being like redacted and lost and purposely destroyed because obviously as a spy she was involved in a lot of different shady things. Um, so. Sonia maybe takes some some liberties with exactly how much we can know and how much he's filling in the gaps. Some people objected to that. I personally really like Sonia Pennell's writing style. I didn't really mind it and I really enjoyed the audiobook that was um, narrated by I think it's Juliet Stevens who has just got the most glorious voice especially for this kind of thing. This kind of falls into a weird subcategory of non-fiction that is incredibly popular at the moment which is like women spies in World War II of which there are about six or seven books out at the moment about a different woman all calling her like the most dangerous or most secret or most important spy. So I do heavily recommend that you go and like do a bit of googling if you like the idea of this one or if you've read this one and want to read more. I'm thinking of um there's Agent Sonia that's out there that is by somebody McIntyre, Ben McIntyre maybe, uh, Codename Suzette is another one, there's definitely a couple more on my want to read list, there's loads out there that I haven't read yet but it's definitely a very rich area of non-fiction if you are keen for this one and there are a, at least one maybe two uh, spy historical fictions on this list that would also be quite good fits if you wanted to kind of do a fiction non-fiction pairing. And on the note of a spy book actually the next one I want to talk about is Transcription by Kate Atkinson. Um, this is a spy book, it's about a woman spy, um, she's involved in, she's a British spy and she's basically involved in trying to weed out 
um, or rather a British intelligence agent who's trying to help weed out British, uh, sorry, German spies over in Britain. And so she works as a transcriptionist, but she also um, listens in to various conversations. And it follows a timeline focused on her during her time in the war, but then also a timeline more closer to modern day, where she potentially has some kind of connections of being a Russian spy herself really enjoyable i read it now i think about 18 months ago maybe even longer ago it might be even two and a half years now i like kate atkinson's work she also has another one which is called life after life that focuses a lot on world war ii but um has sort of a funky timeline thing going on which is why i haven't included this because these are a lot more like straight laced strict historical fiction books without any kind of supernatural elements but i would recommend checking that one out too i love her writing style i think she does some really great character development work and i really enjoy transcription in general the next one i want to talk about is kind of iconic fairly classic a lot of people have heard about it but i do think it stands up to the hype and that's atonement by ian McEwan. so this is focused on celia and robbie who are star-crossed lovers who get pulled apart by a really tragic um uh, event kind of a false accusation that gets leveled at robbie when they're quite young and it's about them trying to come back together and it's about sort of both of their experiences going through the war there's a fairly cool twist at the end that i won't go into details of but that i really enjoyed and robbie's actually um at dunkirk and it describes a lot of his time there and then celia was involved in um, being sort of part of the kind of nurse relief and sort of um, working within the first aid uh, in the UK so you get to kind of see those sides of things as well. It's incredibly lyrical and really kind of gorgeously written. I think Ian McEwan is very strong when it comes to his descriptions and his settings rather than necessarily his character work um, but like I said fun twist at the end, the movie's stunning and just a really great book. Read it ages ago, studied it I think at university technically, no at A levels, studied it in my A levels? Maybe can't remember. Definitely did something to do with it in my A-levels, but great book. I actually have a quote of it tattooed on my body. Time to talk about an absolute classic of which I might have one of the original editions of, and that is uh, Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. This is called a polymesmeric novel that no one will forget on the front, but I do think that that's actually kind of accurate. This focuses on Yossarian, who is a bomber pilot who is based just outside of Italy, and it is his job to go and bomb the Italians, basically. And it's kind of this weird, absurdist novel where the timelines are all messy, and the whole point to it is kind of to highlight the absurdity of war in general. Um, so the Catch-22 is to to be able to get out of not being sent up to do the bombs you have to be able to prove that you're insane but if you are sane enough to realize that you're insane to go start the process of being declared insane then you're sane enough to go up in the plane and it sort of has all these kind of constant looping things there's a whole host of different characters um it is funny and dark and awful and terrifying and hilarious in equal measure it just it is such a clever clever book that is really difficult to get into at the beginning but then once you sort of sink into it it's fantastic and i definitely want to do a reread of it at some point to be able to see kind of the the sort of constantly running jokes that go through it it really relies a lot on kind of repeated themes repeated phrases all the way through it does also remind me quite a lot of mash in the way that it sort of um approaches its humor so that one's not about world war ii that's about the korean war but i totally recommend it if you enjoy this too great tv show the next one is another non-fiction and that is hiroshima by john hershey this is um was i think a new york times article originally or like in the new yorker and basically it describes um john Hershey who is an American writer who spent nine who went out to Hiroshima nine months after the bombing to basically look at the human impact of it I read this book years ago and there are still snippets of it that I can like vividly and viscerally remember it's incredibly like visually arresting it's um incredibly intense and should really be mandatory reading for anything connected to the war and anything connected to conversations about nuclear power and like nuclear bombs in general um ruinous absolutely ruinous book but would heavily recommend very short but incredibly impactful so yeah that one will uh, will give you some sleepless nights now drifting back into our historical fiction uh, and sort of more modern historical fiction I have Half Blood Blues by Essie Edugan this is phenomenal I enjoyed this book so much it is um, set in uh, 1940s and it is um, specifically in the aftermath of the fall of Paris to the Germans and it is about a sort of troupe of black jazz musicians and one of them basically gets taken away and it's about them trying to to avoid uh, the German authorities and sort of try and get themselves out of Paris and to safety. Um, it also covers kind of a love triangle and sort of a kind of clashing uh, between two gentlemen 
in the story and also it kind of has a modern day uh, timeline looking at sort of the fates of the various people who were involved in these kind of altercations. Um, hugely descriptive of when it comes to music and the jazz scene in general and I like with um, Eagle and Crane it really focuses kind of performance on what it, what arts the arts really mean especially in these kind of times of intense stress. Um, so yeah very very enjoyable book very lyrical um, sort of lovely character development but like with quite a few of these actually it's really focusing on that setting and kind of creating an app atmosphere in the book. And then the final one I want to talk about I finished quite recently and that's The Huntress by Kate Quinn. This is a fairly chunky historical fiction compared to many out there but it is focused on three kind of main characters. Uh, one of them is the Huntress who is an infamous Nazi who has managed to get away with war crimes. Then it follows the gentleman who is desperately trying to track her down to avenge his brother. And then the Russian uh, fighter pilot who is part of the only all women uh, kind of fighter pilots basically of the entire war but definitely Russia um, and it, she also had had a run-in with the Huntress and also wants revenge and it's about sort of this cat and mouse desperate chase after the war and really looking at the ramifications what happened and then you also get these flashbacks to um, kind of Nina's time being a pilot and what were the various people doing in the war in general. Um, fantastic like absolutely fantastic, loved the plot, really fast paced, really fun um, like I said, a lot longer than a lot of historical fiction, but I personally enjoyed it. I felt like it meant that we really got to know all of the characters and you really got to care for them and see kind of the full breadth of each one of the timelines and different um, points of view, so nothing felt overly rushed. Kate Quinn has got a huge back catalogue of books set in World War II. I definitely want to check out more of her stuff. Uh, she has one called The Alice Code that I believe is also about spies because everybody loves a good book about women spies. And uh, I will hopefully be checking that out sometime soon, but maybe not for the History Challenge. My TBR is fairly excited already. So do let me know what you think to these. Have you read any of these books? Do you have any other recommendations for World War II books? Clearly you will do because like I said there are so many books set in World War II out there both in terms of fiction and non-fiction but it's a really rich area of history that I really enjoy reading about. Sorry I'm really basic I know. So have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye!